Hi, I'm Giselle Grenier. I'm a professional artist specializing in portrait work of people, pets, and wildlife. But in my fun time, I like working with mixed media and art journaling. Today, I'll be demonstrating techniques and studies with watercolor drawing supplies. So on the table, I've got two, uh, two samples ready, and one is a tulip sketch, and one is a butterfly with a flower. Now, the tulip sketch, the inspiration came from this, and it was I was working um, in my art journal. I did about 20 different uh, studies of this tulip, and this is the one we're going to complete. A line drawing has been provided. The second one is a bit more of a formal piece, and I've got these two photographs that I used as inspiration, and I created the first sample this way, and then I created the second sample this way. And the step-by-step -step instructions in the kit covers off this piece, and this video will cover off this piece. With the videos, I like to be a little more freestyle with the videos and not follow the step-by-step -step instructions. I use the videos to demonstrate a lot more technique and different things that you can do um, just to get you more, um, more opportunities to play with the material. These are all created on watercolor paper, and the cute thing about this design is with, you can see with the size compared to my hands how big it is. If you take your watercolor paper and fold it in half and you can trim it, you can use this as a custom note card or a little greeting card. That's, this project is perfect for that. A line drawing has also been provided for the butterfly design. So I'm going to put these aside, and I'm going to show you the kit that we're going to be using. Okay, so this is the kit. It's nice and clean. The one I'm going to be working from, not so much. <laughs> so you've got a wide variety of watercolor pencils and watercolor cakes. You've got a brush, you've got a sanding block, a pencil sharpener, and you've got your, um, your little palette here. The palette is great to play with. My, for this workshop though, I'm going to be using palette paper because it gives me a much larger area to mix my colors. Uh, the, um, with the pencil sharpener, I'm going to show you how to sharpen your watercolor pencils with the sanding block. And in the little watercolor cakes, these are all water soluble, so you use water to activate them. With these cakes there in a hard format, you spritz them with water and then you can use them just like watercolors. So you can come back to this in a week and you could still use the material. The watercolor cakes come with a little case. Don't throw this away because once you take these out and you remove the plastic around these and you mist them up, then you can use this to protect the cakes and to also keep them a little bit moist if necessary. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside and now we're going to show you. This is a well-worn kit. Okay, so you can see that I've already misted my, my paints, they're ready to go. And the pencils don't have the color names on them, so you're going to be, I'm going to be calling them out as brown, blue, pink, orange, red, white. Okay, we're only going to use a few uh, for this project. The watercolor cakes have already been misted, but I want to show you right now how to sharpen a pencil. So I'm going to take the light blue. I'm going to take the sanding block and I'm going to take, actually, no, I'm not going to use light blue. Let me use the, what color is this one? I'm going to use the, the dark blue because then I can use that to show you the exercises. So I just have a sheet of palette paper here and you can't use these pencils in an electric pencil sharpener. Um, first of all, because this is pigment and it's very, very soft. So all you're going to do is um, waste pigment. So you hand sharpen these just to get a little bit of the, the pigment showing. Then you use a sanding block and you go back and forth. A sanding block is just extra fine sandpaper. You can also use this technique to sketch your, your sketching pencils. And you just go back and forth until your pencil is at a very sharp point. Now, if you want, you can tap this excess off in your actual little palette here. Oh, I can't pick it up. Your little palette here, uh, just to, you know, and you can use that to 
block and backgrounds. And where I dropped my pencils, the pigments, uh, the leads have, have broken. It's not lead, but I call it lead. And I just keep that because you can use these as well. You just add a little bit of water to them. Okay, so we'll put that aside. And let me grab some watercolor paper. Everything is done with watercolor paper, and you really don't need anything more than, let's see, maybe a graphite pencil, a vinyl eraser, a bucket of water, and some paper towel. So on your watercolor paper, what to do is take your, you're going to do this with all your pencils, and you want to create color swatches. So what you're going to do is you're just going to, Make some marks, okay? And I'll do that. I'll just get all the pencils, and we're just going to do that. Do your drawing in the order that that you want. I'm just I'm just randomly doing this with each pencil. Anytime you get uh, some art material for the first time. Whether you use these same pencils on this paper, I've also used these pencils and the watercolor cakes on acrylic paper and even the Royal Landical canvas paper, which is uh, really interesting. The, t the, the, the effect is much different. I always like to create a color chart such as this because that way I have a written record of what I can do. I'm not going to bother with the white. I'm just putting one layer down, nothing fancy. What I'm doing is making a color chart so you can see what the colors look like when we add some water to them. And I'm going to go into the other kit to grab the red because the red, I broke it. Okay, and now you're going to take your, your brush, you're just going to rinse it in water and have some paper towel ready. And just going over activates the pigment and it distributes it throughout the paper. The amount of water you use will depend on how much pigment you have on the paper. So right now I use a lot of water on this. You can see how it really creates a, a, a transparent wash. The more water you use, the more you'll be able to spread it out. Just don't use so much, especially in the smaller area. So I didn't use as much water here and I can't spread it out as, as far. And when creating a color study like this, always rinse your brush in between. That way you can have the colors being true. Okay, so we're going to do this for all the colors. Purple is really pretty. Okay. I know this sounds tedious, but you, or really looks tedious, but it's something you really should do because that way you'll learn about how much water to keep in your brush, how much pressure to use with the pencil. Okay, so there's that. Now, so that was taking dry pencil on dry paper and then adding water. Well, what happens if we wet the paper first and then add our pencil? I just got to make sure I see where I'm going here. Much more intense because as I'm going over the wet paper, the pencil, the pigment, is dissolving and spreading out immediately. There will be some times where you want to use this technique, sometimes you'll want to use this technique. There's also painting right from the pencil. I don't do this very often, but you take your brush and you just wet the tip of the pencil. And where this is handy is if you're, let's say you're painting outside, you're going on a hike and you're painting outside and you can't bring a full bucket of water, but let's say you have like a little misting bottle or um, 
Aurora Online Nickel has a fantastic little Aquaflow brush and it's got water water in a little canister and a paintbrush built onto it. That you can do with this. You just take your little brush, rub it onto the pencil, and then you can paint. A very transparent effect, but that way you can just take your pencils with you and your little Aquaflow brush and a watercolor sketchbook. Very different look. I absolutely love love this look so that takes care of that so we have dry meat dry pigment on dry paper add water we have wet paper and then add in your pigment on top of that and then we take the brush and paint directly with the pencil so there's a couple of different things that you can do with the watercolor cakes they are very similar to watercolors in the aspect that you just touch the color in, pick it up, blend it, and then put it on the paper. And I will use, oh, let's use the blue. I'm going to take them out. And I'm going to put it right here. Because you can actually just leave them in the, the case. Okay, and I want to show you how vibrant this is. Isn't this beautiful? What I like doing with this I like doing this rough sketch. And this is where we're going to do tulip study. We're going to utilize the texture of the paper to create this wonderful sketch. Then you can take your brush and dampen it a bit more and just distribute this if you want to cover all the pores of the paper. Absolutely wonderful um, product to use for this. And you can, with a brush, you can make a fine line. And with a round brush, you can make a nice circle. And you can play with it and let it dry and do whatever you want with it. With watercolor, though, as well as watercolor, watercolors, but it's the same aspect of when you, or same thing when you use the watercolor cakes and the pencils, they will seek out moisture. So if I create a square here, and create another set and let's use purple and I'm just going to create that I'm only going to wet this side right here What should happen is when I start adding water to this, as soon as I, the brush touches here, the pigment will come into the water. Because it seeks out moisture. There we go. Okay. And you see it's starting to seek out the moisture. It will not go into this square because this is what's moist. And I can bring a little bit more water in here. Touch this a little bit more. And another thing you can do, tilt the paper. It will not go past that square. Now, the only time it will go past the square or outside the wet area is if you've got physically so much paint, then it will just kind of bubble over. I can cover that whole square. See where it's circling? That area right there is drier than everything else. See? So that's kind of neat. I like that. To do color mixing. It's no different. Color mixing with the watercolor pencils is a little bit more challenging because you're having to do a lot of layers. I like the watercolor cakes for doing color mixing. So we have yellow here. Let's touch in a little bit of the blue. We get a green, although you get a green with the kit. And let's just go right here. When you work the watercolor cakes on dry paper, you have a lot more control. When I touch, right, when I touch to the purple, is it dry? No, it's wet. Oh, it's starting to bleed a little bit. It's just damp. 
Okay. Watercolors are also transparent. So if you wanted to see, I touched it and it's bleeding through. If you were to take, um, if you had, let's say, a, um, a blue and then put yellow on top, you're going to get green. So if I turn around, no, not, I'm sorry, we want blue. What is this? There we go. Sorry about that. Oh, and I broke it. See, too much pressure, too much pressure. So this little bit here, I'm going to put it in the case. And I'll just get the other pencil, which is already sharp. So try not to use too much pressure. There we go. What is I dropped all my pencils. Actually, I didn't drop my pencils. My cat knocked everything on the floor. I'll blame the cat. <laughs> There we go. So I've got blue. Now I'm going to take some yellow. Now we have the blue. If we take yellow and go right on top, we instantly see green. A very, very dark green. But if we take yellow first, it's much harder to color a light color over dark. You want to do light color first and put dark on top. So you saw how hard I had to press with the yellow. Now with the blue, watch, lightly, very light pressure with the blue. Okay. Now let's take our brush. I'm going to rinse the brush and let's go in here. So I've mixed all these colors together, very dark. So let's just make a little swatch here. That's what it looks like. What's that right here? Really nice dark green. Rinse the brush and let's go over this one. And what you end up with this one is a yellow green. So it depends on the order that you put your color down. If I want something much darker than that, uh, let me grab the other pencil. Okay, a little bit more pressure. Not a lot, not as much as I did for, for this one here. And we'll wet that. There we go. So you get a much darker green. And then you can as well go right back into the same spot with more pencil. to change what it looks like. And you should let it dry if at all possible. I prefer doing my color mixes with the actual paint. So if we did the same thing here, we take yellow, add a speck of the blue. You can see how fast that mix was, but the, it's a much more soft gradation. So when you want to do color mixing with the pencil, I like to do that for the detail work. Like for the tulip, we're going to use the pencil to go around, to create edges, to create the stem for the detail work. Then I love using the cakes to fill in, um, to fill everything in. I absolutely love. But I myself love this scratchy look. where I can dry brush. Now dry brushing is where you're taking the brush and you're just going over dry paper. Okay. With the tulip study, this is what we're going to do with the background. And if you don't like, if you don't like the scratchy look, then just create a full thing. When you're doing a study, a study is for the purpose of learning about a subject. And I like to take that opportunity to also learn about materials. There's no need to paint a full uh, background. You can just paint it unfinished. I have seen, there's been some portrait work that I've seen from professional artists, and one of them is Richard Smith, and watched him paint um, uh, the one we did, uh, a painting on stage, it was live, and he didn't even finish the edges, and it was, it was stunning, because the study wasn't about the edges, it was about the portrait, so it's the same thing with here. The tulip study is about the tulip, not around getting a full formal background, but you can paint it in if you want but I love the scratchy look. Then I could take 
Let's see if I take, oh, let's take some purple, light violet, and I could just go over. Now, the colors pretty well match the pencils, except, okay, there's extra, there's, the colors are a little bit different. Whereas the pencils, you have a red, a pink, and an orange, and here you've got a crimson, red, and orange. With the pencils, you've got a light blue, which you have in the cakes. I guess it would help if you could see. And the purple is much darker than this. And everything else is, oh, and then you have a dark green, which you have in here, but you have a, also have a light green, which you don't have in here. So you have a little bit more flexibility with how you want to play with the colors and mixing. Now, formal color theory is outside the scope of this workshop. So if you visit my website, artplace.ca, I've got a gazillion things on there that are free to watch where that can help you uh, utilize these projects as well. At the end of the video, there's going to be a link to a bonus video that's just for you. So you can get some more practice with, uh, with the watercolor drawing set. And I really hope that you give it a shot. So I think that we're pretty well set to get started on our project. So why don't I put this aside for a sec and I want to just quickly, 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 quickly cover off the line drawing. So the line drawing was provided to you. All you need to do, and in the step-by-step -step instructions, this is um, detailed. You take your line drawing, put a sheet of tracing paper over it, trace it with a pencil, then put a sheet of graphite paper on top of your watercolor paper, put your line drawing on top, then just go over it again with a pencil or with a stylus with, and the graphite transfer paper. Think of it like carbon paper, but it's wax free. You only use as much pressure as you need. So always check. And um, if your lines are too dark, just erase them. Okay. You want it to be very faint because watercolors are transparent. Your graphite will show through. Okay. So even if you press a little bit too hard, there's a way to get around it. All right. Let's start painting the tulip study. I usually use the pencils to draw to get a crisp edge. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of color in here. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to take the dark green. like so, and then take the yellow and go in between. You notice I made the, the line broken there. That'll just enhance the highlight that goes right in there. And then just color in our base here. Okay. And then from there, you take your wet brush and you can come in and go over the pigment to distribute. And where the paper is um, without any color, you can then just spread the color out to this area, and this will be a natural, naturally light spot. Rinse the brush. And watercolor pencils are the same as the regular watercolors. As soon as you add water to it, it's going to seek moisture. So the colors that are next to each other, if you don't want them to blend, let one section dry. You can draw everything at once if you want, but you let it dry before adding water. So once I have that in there, I can turn around now and take the pencil and go over the area that's wet. And that'll make the area very, very deep. Okay, see how dark that is? And it's very soft. I suggest that you try this study a few times using um, just dry on like pencil on dry paper and then uh, dry pencil on wet paper, wet pencil, dry paper, all these different combinations until you get the effect that you like. That way you can practice all different techniques. So while that's drying, why don't we work on use some of the, the little pans. So for the pans, I'm just going to bring out the blue here. 
and I'm doing this strictly for video purposes. I would normally leave them um, in the tray, but they're really, really dirty. There we go. Okay. You can see my yellow is well used. So you can also load that up and then bring that right into here just to really intensify the flower. If I wanted to make this a little bit darker, I'm just going to touch into the orange, take a little bit of orange, a little bit of yellow, and I can just t touch, make some lines, like so. the bottom and that'll hold that'll hold like that and take just some yellow bring a little bit more yellow here then as soon as I put the the yellow which is wet from watercolor cake next to the pencil the colors will merge together to erase you basically just take a damp brush and you blot like so to remove some of the some of the pigment Okay, I can see quite thick paint there, so I can just take my brush and just blot and redistribute. There we go. You can still see a little of the graphite showing through, which is fine. So now, w w let this dry, but we can continue on working. And one of the things I like to do now is show you how to do a background working around the flower. And we're going to use, I just need to make this a little bit wetter. We're going to use the cakes and I'm going to use them dry. So all I'm going to do is just take blue, put that out there, then take some water in my brush and distribute. This is the light blue. I like the effect of dried watercolor watercolor on dry paper. I love the look. Now watch this one. I'm utilizing the pores in the paper. I get as much of the stroke done as possible. Very spontaneous. Okay. Very spontaneous. Use the light. All right. So it looks something like that. Then take the brush with water and just use the water where the areas are unpainted. And the reason why I didn't go quite close to the flower yet is because the stem may still be a little bit wet. So you're just going to go up to it and I can add a little bit more paint if necessary. I love using the cakes where things get to happen naturally. A bit of water. I apply the color with the watercolor cakes very, very th thickly, very heavy, and I just scratch it. And then I use the brush with water to move it around. I like a lot of texture in my pieces. And now for this area here, we need dark to show light and light to show dark. So let's use the really dark blue right in here. Now you can take your pencil or your brush, I should say, and you can go right into the flower, assuming the flower is dry. Right in here. The worst that'll happen is that you'll, the blue will go into the yellow and it'll turn green. And we don't want to leave it like that. So just take a little bit of water now and just, just, just move it around. You can also take paper towel. So I've got texture paper towel. Now watch. And it leaves the texture. Just make sure you put clean paper towel down everywhere you do this. Look at that. Isn't that great? I love that technique. We can turn around. Now the, the blue is still wet, but if I want to 
uh, enhance the stem a bit. I'm going to get the purple and I can just lightly go over the stem with purple. This is purple, yes, this is purple. And I can also dip into a little bit of water. To really make that stand out. Don't dip the pencil in your bucket of water. You can have little you can have little splotches of water on your palette paper and just go into that. What you don't want is to have the the wood casing in the water. And what this is doing is it's softening the pencil up quite a bit and putting the color down quite thickly. You could take uh, let's see, you could take the dark blue pencil. Now the, the pencils actually match the colors in the cakes. So you can actually take the blue, and the paper's still a little bit damp, and you can go over it just by enhancing a few of the little, little lines here. And then you can optionally turn around and blend it with your brush. Totally up to you. Okay. I will turn around, though with the pencil, just go right to the edge, add a little bit more pigment, and so that's that, okay? So that's the basics, the basic of how to apply the watercolor pencil, use the cakes uh, to do this study. Now I do this a few times, and again experiment with uh, dry pencil on dry paper, uh, wetting the pencil on dry paper, and then wet paper with the dry pencil, you know, so on and so forth to try that. So with the flower and the butterfly, we're going to be using the pencil for the detail work of the butterfly and then the cakes for the flower. Now for detail, what I'm talking about is actual, we want to see strokes. So in the center of the flower, we see all these little jiggy jags here. We're going to use the pencil to create all those marks. I'm going to get the other piece here. And so you see the line drawing, which is way too dark. So I'm just going to take my eraser. And lightly erase that. And as well, the color that I use for the butterfly, you don't have to paint it the same color. You can paint it whatever color you want. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to work on the flower. So I'll do the flower with the cakes and then the butterfly with the pencils, except the center I'll end up bringing in the pencil. So for those, I'm going to bring in the reds, the orange, the red, and the crimson. Okay, so do a dark red, medium red, and light red, and this is more of an orange. So with this, all you're going to do is dampen all the petals. Just the petals, not the background. This is actually done better without a line drawing, done, f done completely freehand. That way you don't have to follow any particular lines. I like using the, the brush to do the strokes. For example, take a brush and just go down and make the stroke. A palette paper doesn't work as well though. It's much nicer doing this freestyle. So we're going to start off first with the red with a little bit of orange and get it quite soupy. You're going to go to the base and just touch the base of the flower like so. The base of the petals, I should say. Well, that one I forgot to put water on there. And what's happening is that wherever there's moisture, the watercolor, the water pigment will actually seek out moisture. Except for here, you can see that one's not moving, so I'm just going to rinse my brush and flow it out by hand. And I'm just going to take the edges and I'm just going to fade them out towards the end of the petal.
like so. Okay. And we're going to let that dry. So now let's go over to the butterfly. Now the butterfly is done with the dark blue pencil. And I have trouble seeing which one's the blue. And like I said, the step-by-step -step instructions show how to do this piece. But what I want is I want to freestyle it to show you more technique. You can outline the butterfly in black and then go in with blue. Now we used uh, the black pencil to outline all the details, the dark blue here and the light blue here. You can change up the colors as well. And what would be nice is if you used opposite colors on the color wheel. Now, if you visit my, uh, my website, artplace.ca, I've got a lot of information about that on there. I'm going to use the blue pencil to outline and I've erased a lot of my line drawing. <laughs> I can't see. So I'm going to use the dark blue pencil and now in the action in the other sample piece the back wing I didn't do and let's see where are we now I'm gonna have to follow the actual line drawing so I can see this is purple this isn't blue I knew something was wrong it's no big deal. There we go. I love freestyling stuff. It makes things look fre more fresh. And this is a really, really simple project. Let me make the little tails here. Uh, it's a very, very simple project in the standpoint that you can do this so many times just by changing up the colors. Okay, just like so. The legs we're going to draw in black. The legs and the antenna is the only thing we're not actually going to paint over with a brush. You have to make sure that it's really sharp. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. I had to make sure I had enough legs there. What we can do in here, let's go in with the orange pencil. And you're going to create little zigzags, up and down zigzags for the flower center. This should be relatively dry by now. And you're not going to color this in solid. Okay, let's take a little bit of water and you're just going to lightly go over that very, very lightly. We don't want to lose those marks. Like so. Okay, so we're going to let that dry. And now for the rest of the butterfly, there's little circles that I drew in here. Uh, they're in the line drawing. Okay, you're going to take your yellow pencil and you're going to draw all those little yellow circles. And this is where it's best done freehand. That way you don't have to restrict yourself to drawing inside the circles. You can draw them in wherever you want. You can also make them a different color if you want. And a very, very sharp pencil is very important here. another one here. I like using these, uh, the yellow next to the blue. Okay. So you've got some nice lines there. Now you're going to go with the blue pencil and you're going to color everything, in, everything else in. Use a lighter pressure than you did for the actual outline. So the outline, if you use a hard pressure, then use a lighter pressure for this. We want the outline to show. I am going to go over Where'd the blue go? I am going to go over this a little bit heavier with the blue. I want the outline to show. Okay. 
So when you do your practicing, do one where it's heavy and one where it's light. Down here, I'm going to leave it because that's going to be a light blue. So I'm going to color everywhere around the yellow. And where you color around the yellow, if you happen to touch the yellow, all it's going to do is turn green. No big deal. And this one's also dark. You don't have to color every single little bit because you're going to be able to spread it out with your pencil, your, uh, sorry, your wet brush, but you can also leave it dry if you want. I know a lot of people that use their watercolor pencils as if they're colored pencils. This little head is dark. Okay. Now you're going to take the light blue. You're going to do the same thing in the back. Watercolor pencils are great if you're wanting to draw stuff with a lot with detail because you can still retain the marks, the lines with the pencil. Okay. Let's take our brush now in water. And you're just going to do one piece at a time. And distribute the paint. You could also just paint this with the water, the uh, cakes as well. So let's see if I didn't have enough blue there. I just loaded my brush into a little bit of the blue, the cake, and just add that in. Okay. I'm going to be constantly rotating my piece so I can have the tip of the brush where I have a fine line. I'm just bringing that out. Also use the brush to go around the circles. I'm just going to go back here. So this is just pencil. We're going to work the dark blue section first, then the light blue section. And go between. So take your time with this. You can also do this in a large format. As long as you have the room on your table, you'll be fine. And I want to make these circles a little bit smaller and irregular. So I can take the brush. With, I picked up a little bit of the dark blue, the watercolor cake. And I can just paint right over the yellow spots, changing their shape. And that's what makes everything irregular, therefore a little bit more interesting. Like so. Take a little bit more of that pigment right there. And the body. I'm going to use a little bit of that pigment in here as well. You could also change the direction, make the spots blue and the butterfly yellow. But I wanted the primary color of the butterfly to be the blue because it's opposite on the color wheel to orange and the contrast will, will be much nicer. Bring his tail out a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So we're not going to be painting the antenna or the legs. And now the base of the flower is dry. So now we're going to go into crimson. And now it's going to be the wet brush. And the paper is just slightly damp. And all we're going to do is just take the crimson. Pull in a couple of, couple of the petals, rinse your brush, bring it just a color out just a little bit more, not too much. Okay. 
Oops, I picked up a little bit of blue there by mistake. Okay, just like so. So the one, the actual sample piece that I painted is more on the pink side, where this one I'm making more on the crimson side. I highly suggest you do all your practice work in a journal and then make notes so you have a record of your progress. Uh, you can, Lang, Royal and Langnickel has a wide variety of sketchbooks which are great for, uh, for drawing, sketching, uh, the white canvas ones, covered ones, they're great for the watercolors as well. Oils is the only thing you can't use in a book like that because your surface needs to be primed. But you can make a journal, and I've got information on my website how to do that. Now I'm going to take some orange, and it's going to be more water than orange. And I'm just going to touch the ends of the petals. Just a little bit right into crimson, just more to outline. Just more to do an outline. Okay, there we go. And the blue is almost dry, so I'm going to take this opportunity to paint in the light blue. There's also a little light blue cake if you need to get a little bit more deeper color. That's the cake. You can see how how intense it is. The brush is a perfect size for something this small. And I'm just going to make this little dot a little bit smaller. And the reason why we're able to cover this so well is because the blue is darker than yellow. If you had a yellow um, blue spots, you wouldn't be able to cover them with the yellow because yellow is lighter. Okay, and then we just take a little bit of the blue, pure blue, light blue, and just on the end here. There we are. That takes care of that. And, oh, let's use, we already did the other flower with the watercolor pencil for the stem. Let me use the cakes for that. And we have a green. And rinse the brush, go into some yellow right beside, and just gently pick that up. And I'm just gonna make sure that your petal is dry before doing this. Like so, and then there's a little bit of a green here for the base. and then just yellow at the bottom. You just fade it out like so. Take a little bit of the darker green just here. Now it's going into the petal a little bit. I better clean that up. I'm just gonna take the brush and just push that paint out, out of there. And then from, for the flower, you can make the flower as deep as you want. I actually like it just the way it is. I'm just going to add just a little bit more scarlet, or sorry, a little bit more of the uh, mix that was for the outside petals, just a little bit, a bit more of a contrast, not much. Right in there like so. And we're going to take our purple pencil and we're just going to add some scribble lines on the bottom edge and a little bit in the center. Now when you blend this, you're going to blend the purple only. You're not going to, you, you want to bring the purple into the orange because it'll create, it'll dull down the color. So you're just going to tap, tap, tap here. So that's where the center of the flower is. And then you're going to tap, tap, tap right here. 
keeping make sure you can still see those lines you can also take a little bit more yellow if you want the bottom and the center are okay to be dull when you go over with water the colors are much more intensified okay I'm going to take a little bit more crimson and we're just going to add some shadows right that beautiful right there I love that very very washy very very washy look you almost have to touch into the crimson for every every two petals There we go. That's it. So we'll let this dry and we'll see what it looks like when, we're coming, when we come back. And if need be, we'll do some final touches. Otherwise, we just have to sign it and it's finished. So we'll be back in a bit. So it's all dry now and it's fine the way it is. I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow and go over. There's a bit of a line here. It's where the paint dried out. Let's take a little bit of green and just blend that. There we go. That fixes that up. You know, let's take a little bit of yellow and just brighten up the center here. Not too much because it's gonna it would be naturally darker because the butterfly is there. And you can also take a little bit of the yellow on the outside just to add a few little highlights. So I hope that you enjoyed working on these two little studies and uh, practice uh, doing lots of different versions of dry on dry, wet on dry, dry on wet, all the different combinations and play with the colors to really learn how the colors uh, appear when the uh, cakes or more the pencils are used whether they're wet or dry. So I hope that you enjoyed this workshop and to see other workshops, tips, techniques, um, I visit my website at artplace.ca and I have a ton of videos on there, tutorials. I've got my blog for watercolors, graphite, a lot of sketching, art journaling, and a whole bunch more. Now as a thank you for watching this workshop, at the end of the video, you will see a link to bonus material uh, that will be available just for you. I'm Giselle Grenier and I hope to see you in our next workshop. Until then, Stay inspired.